the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 22, verses 24 through 30. We will say this psalm responsibly by the half verse. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who are children. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart be forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And the all families of the nations shall bow down to him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall come and the Lord forever. They shall come and make known to the people yet no more. The Savior of the Jews is that he does not come. Our second reading is from the first letter of John, chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in, his, in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not have love for a brother or a sister whom they have not seen, whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. The command that we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The world, word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Temple gates. 
coins in those times. It was already in the psyche of the people that they had the vine on the minted on the coins during the revolt against Rome. So in John's Gospel, Jesus says, I am the true vine. He's saying, I am the Son of Man. And the vine dresser now tends to the branches of the true vine. The fruitful he cuts back so that they can bear more fruit. One can conclude that what he's saying is that we are rooted in the Word of God. We draw our spiritual life from the Lord Jesus Christ just as surely as the branch draws sap from the roots. We are nourished by his word and cultivate our relationship with him through prayer. And the proof of our Christianity is found not in our words, not in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but the possession of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We can be, we, when we are spiritually fruitful, that's when people see us as disciples of Jesus. And it's interesting to note in the above passage that he didn't say, you should bear fruit. He stated that when we abide in him, it follows naturally that we would, will bear fruit. It's not a forced action. It's a natural progression. And through prayer, we get our spirit heightened. And that's how we're able to be fruitful. I think we all want to be like a healthy branch getting water and nutrients from the vine, making very healthy grapes, bearing the fruits of the Spirit. But our friendship with Christ, if we consider it real, it carries responsibilities. He reminds us that our responsibility to go forward in our Christian life, growing in fruitfulness, yet always dependent on the one who hears and answers our prayers. You can't do it alone. The key here is that the amount and quality of time that we spend taking care of the vine determines our relationship with him. The more time we spend with him, hearing his voice, listening for his calls, the more fruitful we will become as we respond. The truth of the gospel today is that it reminds us that we, when we abide in Christ, we will be fruitful. We will discover and follow his plan, and we will use the gifts he's given us in our ministries to the people of the world. All of our talents and abilities, they're to be used for God's purpose, his plan, so that his purpose can be accomplished. There is no human element in this. That's what the Spirit is about. And after all, fruit of the Spirit is what God wants us to produce. But we can't help God's people and nourish them unless we understand what spiritual fruit is. Understand how we can bear fruit. Respond to God's love by bearing fruit. But the best part is that we're not alone. We're all, we are all one in Christ. And he and us. We are joined as one family in faith. And with all the twists and turns and ins and outs of today's life, the vine sustains us. Nourishes us and then sends us out to make ripples in the world. By abiding in Christ, we can minister to the needs of others as Jesus did. We can feed the hungry. We can water, give water to the thirsty, entertain the stranger, clothe the naked, visit the sick and the prisoner, all in Christ's name. Where will the branches of your line take you once you learn to fully abide in him? Amen. Amen.
Give thanks for those celebrating birthdays, especially Michael Macchiani and those celebrating anniversaries. We exalt you, O God our King. And praise your name for We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we give thanks for the witness of God's people at Christ Church St. Michael's, and for their rector, Reverend Steve Mosher, and his spouse, Chris Kirsten. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Lord, we ask you to hear the prayers of your people and hold those from our parish and around the world in your Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess our sins against you in thought, word, and deed. I love you, God, and I love you, God, and I love you, God. 
and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us greet each other in a socially distant way.
Uh, next week, I will uh, be installing her as official music director at St. Mary's. Um, you know, this wasn't an easy decision for Donna at all, um, but she she needed to take a new position somewhere outside the area, and um, but she did not leave us um, alone. So we appreciate her and all of her years of service. The vestry and I will be sending her a little note and uh, gratitude for her years here. Um, so welcome. Thank you. Does anybody have any other announcements? Anybody to forget, <laughs> on May 15th, we're going to have a parish work day. Um, this, will be our, this is our spring work day. We're going to focus more on inside areas because we now do have somebody who's working on the outside for us, Jamie Squares. Um, he's been planting flowers and doing mulching and all kinds of stuff, and things are looking good. And So now the, uh, us old people don't have to be lugging around bags of mulch anymore. Um, so, but we will be working on the inside areas because they've been ignored for over a year. And the other thing I have, um, oh, so that's on the 15th. We're going to start at 8 o'clock. We'll have some donuts and stuff. And we'll probably also have some pizza for lunch if we're still here. Um, but we'll figure out, figure that out that day. May 15th, yeah. 13 days, Saturday. Yeah. And then we have this. Blessings everyone shares spiritually. Uh-huh. Got it right this time. And I'm going to start off this. I talked to um, Carol Verstegen yesterday, and who is a member here. She has not been here. Um, and she spent a couple days in the hospital this week with congestive heart failure, but she's feeling better. And... Um, She's on oxygen, she's, you know, getting the fluids out of her and stuff, and uh, um, she asked for prayers, and so just want to pray for Carol. Her husband Bruce is doing fine, she said, <laughs> so now Carol needs our prayers, and hopefully we'll see her soon. She was asking about um, how many people had gotten their, their vaccinations. So let's do another quick poll. Show of hands, who is fully vaccinated? Okay, who is not vaccinated? Is that your hand? <laughs> okay. So, I mean, we're doing really well with that. And so um, I think, you know, people who are out there watching us, come back. Come back to church. We have seating for you. We want to see you. So, does anybody have anything for Bess? I do. Oh, yeah. Well, mine's kind of long this morning because last month I moved with brain dead and I gave thanks for my best friend Nancy's birthday. But I really meant to give thanks for Debbie Walbright. <laughs> so we're going to backtrack. I'll give thanks this morning for Debbie's birthday. I will also give thanks for my nephew Philip's birthday, which is coming up in two more days. And also give thanks and um, for the memory of my late, I'm going to cry, my late godson, David Cahill, who's back to his anniversary today. He died in June, almost two years ago, very suddenly. So, thank you, Lord, for all of them in my life. All right, anybody else? Oh, wait a minute. I'll be right there. Hello, Jesus, you are welcome anytime. This is Judy and Don who have been sitting up here in the front, and I think they're friends with Kathy's, um, but they're also friends of ours. And so they've been coming every Sunday, and we hope they keep coming. We're very glad to have you. Thank you. Yeah. This is for the thank you for the wonderful music and kinship and friendship that Donna gave us over the years. And I wish you absolutely the best with whatever life offers. Thank you. It's in our
cash, so I'm going to stop. <laughs> so uh, this is in honor of uh, our nephew, uh, is it Tyler Wilkerman, who lives in, where is he living, Illinois? It's his birthday today. Okay. Now Tyler is on our prayer list. Tyler is also on our prayer list. He's going to have some surgery this week. He doesn't surgery tomorrow. Yeah. So he, Tyler, especially if you prayers for his surgery tomorrow. And that's all I have. Um, also, um, next week we'll put some more in the announcements about the work day, so you have a calendar of activities um, so that are coming up. We are going to use the best money with Samaritan Shelter, and um, we're going to be working out a schedule in June um, when we can go and make a meal um, over there. So start thinking about that. Um, if that's something you might be interested in doing, let us know, and um, we'll be happy to include you in the group. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
For those who are unable to receive communion in person with us today, or for those who choose not to receive, let us recite a spiritual communion prayer together. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though I cannot consume these gifts of bread and wine, 